session. Thank you very much for joining us in our first program of the Peter Cook Leadership Academy for 2008-2009. We have a special <coughs> guest who joined us uh, about noon, Mary Beth Wardrop, Vice President of Development at Grand Valley. Thank you so much for coming to this event. Thank Mary you Beth. for having me. This is a particularly exciting year. Those of you who were a part of the Leadership Academy last year know we had 12 of you. This year we have almost 30 of you. So the growth here is just tremendous, and I think you're going to have a great year. One of the reasons you're going to have a great year is because you have the opportunity to hear very interesting speakers who have a perspective. When we were at the table earlier today, we were talking about what is it that attracts people to the Leadership Academy, and one of the things that attracts people is the opportunity to hear individuals who have been leaders or who have observed leadership, <coughs> but have that perspective that students can benefit from. Now today, uh, I want you to think about this. Some people study leadership, other people have been leaders. And today, we are fortunate to have an individual mm -hmm. encounter in Tom Haas, somebody who has done both. For that reason, I wanted to make it a priority to have the man that you students know as T. Haas <laughs> join us. And, and President Haas, just let me say on a personal note, thank you so much. I know you are a busy guy, and for carving out time in your schedule to be with us, and on behalf of the Leadership Academy, thanks so much for doing mm -hmm. so. Well, President Haas has reflected on leadership and acquired the habits of a leader himself in a variety of capacities, which makes his perspective, I think, valuable and interesting. You know him as an academic leader, a university leader. He serves as Grand Valley's fourth president, and uh, he's when, before taking up his post in West Michigan in 2006, he was the president of the State University of New York in Cobleskill. He's also been a department chair, a dean, a vice president. He also has a professional life. He's not just an administrator. As an academic leader, he has a professional life as a chemist. And he's distinguished himself in the transportation of hazardous materials as a chemist, where he uh, has earned an international reputation. <clears throat> president Haas also has military leadership. Uh, he's in the Coast Guard. He uh, graduated with honors from the U.S. Coast Guard Academy in 1973. So he's somebody who understands the chain of command. And he has a very, a very interesting take on what, ha what can happen with a chain of command. I can't wait for him to talk about that. You know, if I'm going mm -hmm. vertical on this. President Haas has also been a leader in our community. He serves on a number of boards. Uh, go to the Grand Valley website to see all of the boards he serves on everything from Grand Rapids Opera to Grand Rapids Econ Club and the economic future of our region. He really has a, a, a marvelous array of service. Now, if you talk to President Haas, it doesn't take too long to figure out that he's very physically active and that he has leadership in another area, and that is coaching. Uh, he's coached basketball, softball. He's coached, I think, a number of areas. But I think one of the keys into his personality, one of the key insights that I ever acquired, was when I was talking to a student not too long ago about President Haas. I said, you know, we're going to have President Haas with us. And now that I'm past the formal part of the introduction, I want to give <laughs> sort of this off-the-cuff part and talk about a little story. I was talking to this student, and he said, yes, um, I was playing some basketball in the field house. And uh, it was one morning, and um, there were some guys who were there who were playing, and so I joined up. And I noticed this one middle-aged guy out there on the court, and I thought, what's he doing there? Better than an old guy. <laughs> <laughs> this one middle-aged guy out there, and so we started playing. Hey, this guy could swish some baskets. He was pretty good. And so the young man asked the middle-aged guy, uh, what do you do? Thought he was a coach or something. And uh, the middle-aged guy said, oh, uh, I work at Grand Valley. So they play a little bit more basketball. And now this guy is figuring out that not only is he making baskets, he's doing good picks out on the court, and he's doing other things, and sort of pushing these younger guys around. So the young guy says, second question, uh, OK, well, what do you do at Grand Valley? Middle-aged guy says, oh, uh, I work in administration, as the ball is sailing over and swishing again. They play a little bit more, and this uh, young guy then gets really starts to get pushed around as uh, the middle-aged guy is actually blocking out right underneath the basket, getting rebounds and that kind of thing. This guy gets up and asks him and goes back a third time. So what do you do in administration? Middle-aged guy, ball sailing the air, about to switch. He says, I'm president. <laughs> now, that 
blew this young man away because immediately, of course, he said, oh, my word, I've been jostling and pushing around the president of Grand Valley. I'm just a student here. And, of course, President Haas immediately put him at his ease and said, no, you did your best. You did your best. You gave it your all out here, here in this field house, in this game. And, of course, that's one of the leadership tips, you know, that you will hear from President Haas. You give it your all, you know, with passion and intensity. And President Haas has acquired a number of tips in addition to that one that I would like for him. We're so proud that he's here with us today to share those tips with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the President, Thomas Haas. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Let's see. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to come out here a little bit uh, better to do it from this vantage point. And if I need to get my notes, I can. Um, thank you for uh, that story, and uh, after that, uh, I actually woke up. <coughs> um, actually, uh, when I was in New York, I was playing uh, some three-on-three -three, uh, one afternoon with some students, and uh, uh, after the particular game, uh, games we played, there was a, a young man who uh, we call when we were upstate New York coming from downstate. I grew up in New York City, so every, anything uh, above Westchester County was upstate. So this young man, uh, after we played, and I was I was pretty beat, but sweating, and had a great time with the uh, with the students. And uh, the, the the guy said, "Hey, Prez, you got game." <laughs> That's got to be the best uh, compliment one could ever have uh, from the students. And and I say that because uh, I've, I've been an educator for uh, almost my entire career. I went uh, through uh, the service, um, of course, as, as noted, but uh, I've now uh, been uh, teaching uh, for 31 years, and I really view that role as an educator uh, where we can use our, our passion trying to develop uh, our students into uh, those types of people that they want to be. And that whether that be in chemistry class or teaching leadership or coaching or just being engaged with uh, students, both uh, in terms of the traditional student and, and the uh, non-traditional student, which I have had chance to uh, teach and, and be with uh, throughout my, my career. So what I'd like to do today is uh, talk a little bit about the leadership. Of course, uh, we're here to uh, uh, share some, some perspectives on that, what I've uh, learned and continue to learn about leadership. And also, uh, really, through this, uh, pay tribute to a gentleman who had the vision uh, with Ralph Hallenstein, the vision to create, uh, in partnership with Grand Valley State University, the opportunity for you all to learn from each other, in addition to hearing middle-aged guys like me. <laughs> but it really is a, a great tribute to a gentleman who uh, has seen generations of leaders and he himself is one, too. And I'm uh, blessed in so many ways to uh, know people like Ralph Hallenstein, a, a true uh, pillar in the community, an individual who uh, has uh, understood the nature of service and of leadership. And I find that to be uh, an extraordinary opportunity for my wife and I to be with someone like, like he. So I did uh, wanted to say uh, thanks, Ralph. So let me go ahead and we'll get started and I'll, I'll uh, stay with some notes and then uh, go from there and then we'll uh, engage in some uh, conversation as well. Uh, but truth be told, uh, this guy right here, Gleaves uh, asked me uh, a couple of uh, months ago, he said, uh, do you believe in free speech? <laughs> and I said, of course I do. He said, well, can you give one? <laughs> So that's why I'm here. Uh, in, in addition, of course, to sharing some thoughts and perspectives, but uh, uh, th this is uh, your equivalent of a free speech. So you're a man of your word. <laughs>